Unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a Cunarder or cutting out a white star never shipped a handspike. Yes, I have done my best for you. And why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter. The mistake was ours, not yours, and I was honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. Mm. When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd apprentice him to some career seafaring. I was, alas, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind this promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word all right through being hard of hearing. <laughs> Mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate, I took and bound this promising boy apprentice to a pirate. Mm. Oh. Pilot, pirate, yeah. <laughs> Sad mistake it was to make and to him to a vile lot. I bound him to a pirate crew instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your Shylock, which you wouldn't have found had he been bound, apprentice to a pilot. Oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. 
Rise, sweet one. I have long pardoned you. Oh, the two words were so much alike. They were. They still are, though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases individually. I love you all with affection unspeakable, Aww. but collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. <laughs> oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. <gasps> poor lad, poor lad. <laughs> well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We just don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only uh, half past 11, and you are one of us until the clock strikes 12. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Here, here. Very well. It is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. But when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. Right. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. But of course, we are orphans ourselves, and we know what it is. Yes, but it has gone about, and what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which uh, um, we know is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us be absolutely merciless. Well, there's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. After 12 o'clock, I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What is to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. Um, <laughs> Ruth, I feel some difficulty about you. It is true that I um, admire you very much. But um, I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is, well, the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I, uh, I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say, I think it is. <laughs> that is my impression. But as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is... <laughs> Just as possible that I may be mistaken. <laughs> True. <laughs> what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, plain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ruth is very uh, well. Well, <laughs> very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about. <laughs> Do you really think so? Oh, well, then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. No, no. In justice to her and in consideration for you, I will leave her behind. Uh, no, 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 Frederick, this must not be. We are rough men. Rough! Who lead a rough life. Rough! Rough, sit. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. Why, I think I am right in saying that there is not one here that would deprive thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not, not one. one! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. 
You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. By the love I have for you, I swear it. But would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by following me back to civilization. Oh, no, sweet. Frederick, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, <laughs> it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. Yeah! Um, what did you think of yourself? 
That is a delicate question to answer. I think I am a fine woman. That is your uh, candid opinion? Yes. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I'm sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if, I say, if you really are a fine woman, then your age shall be no obstacle to our union. <laughs> Hark, surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be the Coast Guard? No, it does not sound like the Coast Guard. Oh, curses. It is the voices of young girls. If he is to see them, then I am lost. By all that's marvelous, a bevy of beautiful maidens. Lost, lost. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. And Ruth, ah, Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me. Fair as gold, and master, and i not so. And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jot so. Upon my innocence, you played. I'm not the one to not so. Your face is mine, your hair is gray. Regret you only got so. Faithless woman, to deceive me. I who Lost it so. Lost and lost and do not leave me. Leave me where you go. Faithless woman. Lost and lost and. Faithless woman. Lost and lost and do not leave me. Do not leave me. I will trust it so. Faithless woman. Do not leave me. I will trust it so. Before these gentle maidens, I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. Thank you. 
magazine. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are, and we came over a rather difficult country. Oh, but how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone. Why, in all probability, we are the first humans to ever set foot in this enchanting spot. Except the mermaids. It's the very place for mermaids. Who are only humans down to the waist. And who, <laughs> and who can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. <laughs> Tails, they may, but feet, they cannot. <laughs> but what shall we do until Papa and the servants arrive? Well, we are quite alone, and the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes <gasps> and stockings <gasps> and paddle? Yes, yes, yes the very thing! Stop, ladies, pray. to attune myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounded duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sir Speak? I am a pirate. <gasps> a pirate horror! Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, implore your kind assistance. Oh, Pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty. How pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty. Oh, is there not one man? Which does not feel the moral beauty of making worldly interest subordinate to sense of duty, who would not give up willingly all matrimonial ambition to rescue such a Oh! 
I can tell him down in Raphael's from Gerard Dawson's Zophonies. I know the Koken Codus full of flaws about his Zophonies. Then I can have a few of which I heard the music is dinner for. Ooh. Do any of you know climbs at dinner for? It's uh, so tricky. Minifor. Oh, thank you. And whistle all the ash from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the ash from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the ash from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the ash from that infernal nonsense pinafore. Then I can write a washing bill in Babylon like uniform and tell you every detail of Caracatus' uniform. Short and manners, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. You should have managed vegetable, animal, and mineral. He is the very model of a modern major general. When I know what is meant by Mamelon and Ravelin, I can tell at sight a mouse arrival from a javelin. When such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, when I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering. Of elemental strategy. Oh, 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 oh. Time for strategy. Ah, here's one. You'll say a better major general has never sat. You'll say a better major general has never sat. You'll say a better major general has never sat. You'll say a better major general has never sat. You'll say a better major general has never sat. For my military knowledge, though plucky and eventually, is only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. But still in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. Introduce myself. I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, oh, permit me. Oh, I'll explain it in two words. We propose, <laughs> yes, uh, to marry your daughters. Dear me! Against our wills, Papa! Against our wills! Oh, but you mustn't do that. Tell me, this is a picturesque uniform, but I'm afraid, but I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We're all the single gentlemen. <laughs> well, yes, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Papa, don't believe them. They are pirates, the famous pirates of Penzance. <laughs> <laughs> the pirates of Penzance? I've often heard of them. Ooh. All except this gentleman who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today and who means to lead a blameless life evermore. And to marry your daughter. With her consent. Ah, oh, but wait a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. Oh. And we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. Ah. But we waive that point. <laughs> we do not press it. We look over it. Hmm. An idea. And do you mean to say that you'd rob me of these, the sole remaining crops of my old age, and leave me to go through the rest of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, oh, dash it all! Here we are again! I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, an orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan! I'm not quite sure we understand one another. You see, I ask you, do you know what it is to be an orphan? And you, re you reply, orphan. As I understand you, you're merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, you did indeed. No, I repeated it only once. Ah, oh, but you repeated it. But not orphan! Stop! I think I see where we're getting confused. <laughs> when you say orphan, do you mean orphan a person who's lost his parents? Or orphan frequently? Oh! Oh! I beg your pardon. I see what you mean. Frequently. Ah, 
bus are you set off infrequently? No! Only once! Exactly, you set off infrequently only once. <laughs> oh, men of dark and dismal fate, forego your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy. An orphan boy. An orphan boy. How sad an orphan boy. These children whom you see are all that I can call my own. Poor fellow, take them away from me and I shall be in need alone. Poor fellow, if it you can feel, leave me my sorry, he 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 remaining joy. See at your feet they kneel, your knots you cannot steal. Against the sad, sad tale of the lonely <laughs> orphan boy. Poor fellow, <laughs> see at the feet they kneel, our hearts we cannot steal. Against the sad, sad tale of the lonely <laughs> <laughs> story, but it doesn't diminish my glory, for they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters. For I had an inelegant fiction, indulging in innocent fiction, which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. Protect you 
and honorary members of our band, we do elect you. For oh, he is an orphan boy, he is the rough, the orphan boy. And it sometimes is a useful thing to be an orphan boy. It is the rough, the orphan boy, the rough, the orphan boy.
that you in the calm excellence of your wisdom reconcile it within your conscience to say something that would relieve my father's sorrow? Um, what? Could you cheer him up? I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? To escape from the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. And I am no orphan. I came here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor upon the family escutcheon. <laughs> but uh, you forget, sir. Uh, you only bought the property a year ago, and <laughs> the stucco in your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel, there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are, and I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought disgrace upon what I have no doubt was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you, Frederick, for your prophet solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you that such is the anguish and remorse I feel at that abominable falsehood whereby I escape those easily deluded pirates that I would go to the simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. <gasps> you do not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself. <sighs> At what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven, and before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in hearted. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
observe too great distress on the risks that on us press, and a preference a lot to our chance of common act. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to talk or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Yes, it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Evident, yes, well meant. Evident, ah, yes, well meant. And a sense of duty, stern dictation, I, circumstances, victim, have been guilty. <laughs> Young Frederick, who calls your late commander, and I, your little Ruth, Ruth? oh, mad intruders, how dare ye face me? No, ye not, oh, rush. to listen to you, yet mercy should annoy us to resentment, and so I will be merciful, <laughs> say on. <laughs> Try to raise our spirits, mate, according to our first of all, with wits and quibbles wind. But all in vain the quits we heard, we lay and sobbed upon the rocks, until to somebody occurred a startling paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox, with wits and quibbles heard and quotes, the man to be that paradox. <laughs> A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. The paradox. We knew your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer, and with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox, that paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles, hard and fox, but none to beat that paradox. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> However, I've no desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority, I don't know who, 
very likely an astronomer royal, and decided that, although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a general rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that although you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you are only five and a little bit over. <laughs> Dear me, let's see. Yes, yes, with yours my fingers do agree. <laughs> <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox at common sense. She gaily mocks, though counting in the usual way. Here's 21, I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day. <laughs> Yet reckoning by my natal day. <laughs> I am a little boy of five. <laughs> little boy of five. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Not until my 21st year. No, until you reached your 21st birthday. <laughs> and going by birthdays, you are as yet only five and a quarter. You don't mean to say you're going to hold me to that. No, we merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty. Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you, just now be merciful to me. Listen, I am bound by the holiest ties to this amiable family. I love Mabel madly, and we're on the point of being united. I have served you long and faithfully, and I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We merely content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. But my heart, my life's happiness. Your duty? But Mabel, whom I love so dearly. Ugh, your duty. But General Stanley, who I love as a who loves me as a son and whom I already love as a father. Your duty. You have appealed to my sense of duty. And my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. <laughs> but duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. <laughs> Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. But, oh, horror! 
What is the matter? Oh, I to tell you. No, 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 I cannot do it. And yet, I, I, as one of your band, Speak I... Speak out! I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley. Yes? The father of my Mabel. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, he escaped from you on the plea that uh, he was an orphan. He did? Oh. Yes, he did. It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. Break it. But as your apprentice, uh, I have no alternative. None. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley, that General Stanley is yes. no. Yes. That General Stanley is no orphan. <laughs> When you say orphan, do you mean a person who has lost his parents or orphan frequently? What? Um, <laughs> um, a person who has um, <clears throat> lost their parents. Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he Dared practice on our credulous simplicity? Our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our band and attack Sir Morden Castle this very night. But not a word. He is doomed. Oh, we, oh, we. My heart's on fire, I burn this base deception to repay. This very night, my vengeance dire shall blast itself and go away, away. Away, away, ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish fire, it strikes me to the core, away, away. With the awesome while he tricked us on our brides, let vengeance how the pirates all decides. Our nature's stern is softened with his lies, and in return tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, yes tonight the traitor dies. dies. Yes, 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 tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or so early tomorrow. There's girls like wise. They will not have it sorrow. The ones of spot. In the natures they cherish. And all who plot. To abuse it shall perish. Tonight he dies. It's early tomorrow. tomorrow. His girls like wise. They will utter in sorrow. The ones of spot. In the natures they cherish. And all who plot. To abuse it shall perish. Away, away, away. Stay, Frederick! 
Rangers here. We managed to appear as insensible to fear as anybody here. As anybody here. Sergeant, approach! Young friend! to have led you to death and glory. That is not a pleasant way of putting it. Um. No matter. He will not lead you, for he has allied himself once more with his old uh, associates. He has acted shamefully. You oh. speak falsely. You know nothing about it. He has acted nobly. He has acted nobly. Um. Dearly, as I loved him before, his heroic sacrifice to his sense of duty has endeared him to me tenfold. But if it was his duty to constitute himself my foe, it is likewise then my duty to regard him in that light. He has done his duty. I will do mine. Go ye and do yours. Oh. Right, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is most perplexing. We, we cannot, cannot understand it at all. Still, if Frederick is actuated by a sense of duty, that, that makes, makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter, our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should. Well, it's too late now. It, it is. is. When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plan. his capacity for innocent enjoyment, Sent enjoyment is not as great as any honest man. Our feelings will with difficulty smother. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done, I take one consideration with another. With another. Our policeman's love. Is not an happy one. Ah, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not an happy one. Enterprising burglars, not a burgling, not a burgling. When a cutthroat isn't occupied in crime, Fine in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the cost is finished, jumping on his mother, on his mother. He loves to lie up basking in the sun. I take one consideration with another, with another. A police Policeman's lot is not an happy one. Ah, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is 
not a happy one, happy one. Hill, 
my mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the
as you contrived. But your proud triumph will not be long lived. Don't say your organs, for we know that game. On your allegiance, we've a stronger claim. We charge you ye. <laughs> we charge you ye. <laughs> in Queen Victoria's name. <laughs> we Oh, 